So um, the, kinds of, the kinds of disasters you can have from rail cars involve different kinds of stuff. Rail cars can actually rocket. In other words, if you've got a very flammable rail car and it catches on fire and starts to blow, the tank car itself can take off like a rocket and go for a half a mile or so into your community. Um, but the rest of it is just standard stuff, explosion, toxic gas class. Now, um, I know some of y'all may have that little orange book um, that can tell you about how far you can evacuate. Uh, it turns out that for toxic gas clouds, it's more dangerous at night than it is during the daytime because you don't have as much sun and wind to blow away the cloud, so it stays a longer time in your community and before it dissipates. So any kind of toxic chemical is more, usually more dangerous at night than it is in the daytime. I say that partly because another thing CSX had said to us, you know, when we first started talking to them, they thought we were ignorant, right? So they said, hey, Dr. Laura, here's an idea. How about if we just bring these toxic cars through Washington, D.C. only at night? <laughs> Would that satisfy you guys? Well, no. We know it's more dangerous at night. I mean, everybody knows that who's read the, the orange book and, and looked at the evacuation distances. Okay. Okay, look, now, one thing, that, one thing you ought to know is that the industry is involved in a very concerted process to mislead people about how ready you are. And one of the things they do is a training program called TransCare, where they send railroad tank cars around the country, and then they bring in emergency responders. You know, 80% of the, of the firefighters in the United States are volunteers, 80%. There's 2 million firefighters, 80% are volunteers. They're not professionals. They just have to, they're like bankers and lawyers and, you know, Indian chiefs, and, and, and when, a, when an explosion happens, they have to go and jump in the truck and go see what's happening, right? I mean, the fact is that, well, they, get, they do get some training, but who pays for their training? I mean, it's not like, it's not like we, we fund a real government here in this country, right? I mean, we don't have a hugely well-funded government, and the Lord knows the volunteers have to sell donuts to get, to go, get some money to, put on, to, to buy gloves and trucks and stuff. You know, it's, a, it's almost like a hobby for these guys, but I mean, it's serious business because they put themselves at risk. I'm not trying to downplay that, but I'm just saying that our volunteer firefighters are often com completely unprepared for a big serious event. So they bring them in, however, and this happened in Fredericksburg, and you may, you may have seen this recently. They bring in this TransCare training program, and they let the firefighters clamber around on top of the tank cars and look at the valves and everything. And there's always a picture in the paper, like there was in Fredericksburg, of the firefighters up on top. That's a real dramatic picture, right? And then the quote from the fire chief is always, now we feel so much better prepared. <laughs> well, they're prepared for a cup full of chlorine, but you think they're prepared for... You think, so, well, so I, so I asked the guy who's in charge of the TransCare program for the whole industry, um, Mr. O'Neill, I said, do you ever show people pamphlet 74 from the Chlorine Institute that shows that you can get a cloud downwind 15 miles long by four miles wide? Well, no. Well, no, we don't exactly show them that. I mean, this is false reassurance to let them clamber around on top of a tank car and, and not show them pamphlet 74 is dishonest. It's false reassurance. It's a PR program. And I talked to your reporter at the, at the paper, and I, and I tried to explain that, you know, look, this is, this is what they do all over the country. They, they take people who don't know any better, and they make it look like they're really doing a great job. What percentage of firefighters in the country do you think are trained under this? A tiny sliver. I mean, this is not a serious program. If you want to have a serious program to train your emergency responders, it would have to be the government that did it. You'd have to have government training. You don't leave it up to the industry to you know, put out donuts and, 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 and haul railroad tank cars around the country three times a year or something. I mean, it's really a minuscule program.